Hi, welcome to the Coastline College Virtual Campus in Second Life. You're looking at a small part of the island. I'm sitting right here under a tree in front of the College Center. There I am. You can see at the front desk is an avatar receptionist that helps answer students' questions. So let me go ahead and stand up and let's head on over to the math lounge. Your avatar can walk or it can run or it can fly. Let's do that, shall we? And I'll make a sharp right here, and the second building is our math lounge right there. And I'll go ahead and come on down for a landing. The red circle in front of me is a teleporter. From anywhere inside the campus, you can click on the kiosk and be teleported right to the math lounge. When you enter the math lounge, there's a video that auto starts. There is a soundtrack, but you can't hear it. You're capturing my microphone audio instead. But it just explains a little bit about the faculty and how we use Second Life. It's got a poster, a comfy couch, a podium for instructors, tables and chairs, more posters. But let's head on over to the building next door where we're redoing our math lounge. Oh, back up, back up. One of the statistics instructors, whoops, one of the statistics instructors has uh, some homework that his students go over from here when they meet in Second Life. And inside here is our new math lounge under construction on my right is a large screen when you hover your mouse over it a banner pops up and gives you a URL we're streaming the desktop of my tablet PC onto the surface of this prim the the new viewer too has that capability and we use a couple of software packages to do that fairly technically complex it's taken me months to learn how to do this so let's check it out shall we to the Second Life Math Lounge. I'm glad you guys could make it. I've got three students in here from our Math 140 Business Calculus class. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. At, at this point, we've made it halfway through the course. We've taken the midterm. We've had a, a couple of quizzes, and I just want to know if uh, yes, Professor Felden. Uh, this is Kai Square Silversmith, and I do have a fine. How are you doing this evening? I. I when I was doing the homework problems, I had trouble with those problems where you had to try to find break-even points. Could you go over an example of one of those types of problems? It suggested using your graphing yeah, that, that'd be great. If I recall correctly, it was, you were given a cost function, given a revenue function. And yes, those are the types of problems. Those, that's the type of problem I'm and interested in seeing the solution to. Graphing calculator, but I know that some students did it by hand using paper and pencil. Let's take a look at it. Probably can all see it now. Let me capture it and go ahead and paste it into the whiteboard here. And I can make it large. So I'm going to erase our welcome message and paste this question. And in a second, you all should be able to see it. I can make it large. Okay, so at this point, let me just pause and get some feedback. Is everyone able to see the question? Okay, awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, Lisa, as long as you're you can either typing and speak chatting, into your microphone you or type that, in the chat box. Where the question asks to find the, the break-even point. How do you do that? Awesome. That's it. Set up an equation where the cost equals the revenue. Good. 
Oh, so that's how you start. Yeah. I'm even going to give Lisa credit for asking the que for uh, telling us what the first step is. So Lisa, you now are recorded for everyone to know. I'm even going to give Lisa credit for asking the question, for uh, telling us what the first step, the first step is. Of this question. So now what do I do, Dick? Now that i got my equation, I need okay, to solve the x. Updates. Hopefully now you can see my equation where I let the cost equal the revenue. Equal the revenue. I'll, scroll I'll scroll down a little. How do I solve for x now? Okay, let's check it out. I'm writing it down here. I'm putting it on the equation equal like to zero. zero. There are any. I don't see any, but you know what? This is a... This is something that students often use when the leading coefficient of an equation is negative. I'm going to multiply. And as Dick said, we, we should combine like terms so if there are any. Anything you want to the equation, right? I don't see any. But you that's where I got. That's where I got stuck. Yeah, so let me group the first two, let me group two terms together. Oh, so that's what you do. Two terms together. Thank you. Go ahead. Pingo. And look over here. Um, There's the prime factor. factor. We set that equal to zero. And, and so I'll disregard in business calculus. We don't use the word complex numbers or something. Just real numbers only. So I think I found my answer. Okay, I found my answer. To go from there. Where to go from Let's there. open up the graphing calculator. Let's open up the graphing calculator. There it is. You can just go to update. Let's try going from zero to thousand, three or four or five. Let's try going from zero to twenty. With a tick mark every five hundred units. Finding the right viewing window is a guess and check and error message. Let's try going from zero to. Let's see how this looks. Oh, I don't know. I've got a. I think it's going to work great. A parabola that opens yeah, downward. Find the, intersection point for us. the next thing I'll do is copy and paste that into our notes. The or first way we found the answer was by hand using algebra. Using algebra. Such as the graphing calculator. Or use technology. technology. And then there's one more way, one more type of technology I want to use. Such as the graphing calculator. And then there's one more way, one more type of technology I want to use. Geology. Okay, in the class we talked about a free software program called Wolfram Alpha. Tells us, are you, do you really want to solve the equation? Okay, I'm at the WolframAlpha.com homepage, and so it's type the two equations input, in, and, it's and let's see what we get as a result. That when so let me tell Wolfram Alpha is our last commander to go ahead and at the point x equals It should show up for you in just a second. Okay, and now I think you can see the red dot at the intersection point where x is equal to 10. So we found the answer a third way now by using free software on the internet. Okay? Well, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate your time here while we went over this mathematics here at the Mat Lounge in Second Life.